there, guys. So here's an interesting challenge for you. Take pentagram, the five-petal star polygon is performed in anti-spin, contrasted against two-petal in-spin. This was the challenge that uh, Gina McGrath gave a group of us on the last night of Flame Festival, and we worked very deeply into the night on it. Mike Parisi was the first one to come up with a solution for it, and Mike's solution looked a little something like this. Now, I watched Kate McCoy perform this version of it last week, and I noticed something about it that I hadn't noticed before. Namely, there were portions of it where it seemed like the hands were separated top and bottom, and there were portions of it where the hands were together top and bottom. And in a fit of brashness, I uh, promptly pronounced this cheating on the pattern because... Uh, in my mind, what we were looking for was to keep timing and direction consistent throughout it, such that the hands always remained in relation to each other the same way throughout. Um, I made the mistaken assumption when watching this that what was going on is there was a kind of, I guess you would call it beat matching going on. For instance, uh, when we do triquetra versus extension, the triquetra is a two-beat move. The uh, the extension is a one-beat move, right? However, I could switch my approach to building it such that I had all the downbeats and all the upbeats occurring simultaneously, in which case the hand that's performing the extension is moving around the circle twice as fast as the hand that's doing the triquetra, of course. This was not actually what was going on in Parisi's pattern. What was going on in Parisi's pattern was that he was completing both of these patterns simultaneously. And that's important because in the grand scheme of things, it does the same thing that this version of triquetra versus extension, or to keep it more consistent, this version of triquetra versus extension does. But there's an issue with performing pentagram versus anything, and that's that pentagram has a number of downbeats that is not a whole number. It is a one and a half downbeat move or we'll just call it beats, because uh, I, I know that there are some people who are uh, up in arms about the concept of a downbeat right now. So what that wound up me meaning is that if you were going to complete both the, uh, the, the pentagram and the two-pedal inspin at the same time, your arms had to shift their orientation towards each other the same way they would if you were keeping your downbeats and upbeats even between the poi in triquetra versus extension. Now the way I thought the pattern ought to go would be to have um, timing and direction consistent in the hands, in which case you wind up with this god-awful monstrosity of a pattern. And as you're watching that, notice, once again, that timing and direction between the hands is more or less consistent. But now the problem is, is that it takes two repetitions of the pattern to complete it because it takes two hand paths to complete the pentagram, right? So what's waiting on the other side of this little tunnel is realizing that there's actually three different approaches to building up polyrhythm hybrids. You can have them be polyrhythms in terms of the rhythm of the poi heads versus each other, polyrhythms in terms of the uh, hand pass in relation to each other, and in situations where you're dealing with a pattern like pentagram, where the number of downbeats is not a whole number, uh, contrasting one of those patterns against a pattern that does have a whole number for its downbeats, right? which I think is going to be reasonably complete in terms of, of how we can think about polyrhythm. So, um, yeah, keep on playing with this. Guys, see if I forgot any possibilities here. Uh, in the meantime, thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Peace.